I am Tom Worley, host of South Center's Chat. We have a special guest coming up, Nick Zakrich, farm manager of the Farm Science Review. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome again to South Center's Chat. My name is Tom Worley. I serve as director of Ohio State University South Centers at Piketon, Ohio. We are especially pleased to have a special guest today at our South Center's Chat, the manager of our Prime Science Review at the Molly Kieran Center near London, Ohio. Nick Zakrich is the manager. Welcome, Nick. Well, thanks, Tom. Thanks for having me again. And I did bring some friends with me this time. so. Um, I'd like to introduce our other guests. Um, I have with me Sam Custer, who is the interim assistant director for Ag and Natural Resources and Extension here at Ohio State. And we also have two educators, uh, a specialist Elizabeth Hawkins and uh, county educator David Marison. So they uh, all three have some uh, impact that we what we do at Farm Science Review, a very big impact. And they're leaders in respective areas and have some some thoughts to share with us this year about Farm Science Review in general, but uh, also uh, about this year's virtual show and going forward to next year's hopefully in-person show. Great, Nick. Uh, I know you have uh, really a lot of information to cover and we have real expertise with us today. So I'm very pleased that uh, David and Sam and Elizabeth are with you. I don't know whether you care just to give the audience just a very thumbnail sketch of what Farm Science Review is all about and then proceed to uh, hand it over to your guests. I'd love to, Tom, and, and um, sometimes I have a pretty rehearsed elevator speech, but I'll keep it very brief that Farm Science Review is a major agricultural trade show that happens in London, Ohio. It's a department of the College of Food, Agricultural, Environmental Sciences at the Ohio State University. Uh, that It's unique in that respect that most farm shows are not led by a university. Uh, there's only a few out there, and we're one of the largest in the world for an outdoor trade show. So we're pretty proud of, of what we do. We do a lot of things great at Ohio State. And we do things big and grand, and Farm Science Review is, is no exception to that. So uh, what we do at Farm Science Review, of course, like other farm shows, is have a showcase of machinery and equipment and services that's new in the industry or um, services that, uh, that, that farmers and producers need and others in the agricultural industry need to, to continue moving forward and getting better. And a big part of what we do at Farm Science Review that sets us apart is the education and field demonstrations that we do. Uh, so on site, we have some harvesting tillage and a lot of other demonstrations that occur um, and also have uh, many different areas that host seminars or educational uh, talks on various topics all the way from um, honeybee production and, and honey production all the way up, of course, to grain marketing and, and uh, high level agricultural commodity information. Absolutely. And those educational programs are led by OSU Extension. And that's the uh, specialists that we have today that are heavily involved in coordinating various aspects of the Farm Science Review. So I'm not sure what your order is today, but uh, please proceed. Yeah, and, and uh, what I like to tell people is I'm like the quarterback in this situation where I get a lot of credit uh, when credit's due. Um, it may not be me that does the work. You know, I, I'm, I'm not here as a face, but of course, behind the scenes, everybody's working. And, and one of those big faces is Sam Custer, who's the leading a couple of different committees for us at Farm Science Review and the Molly Care and Ag Center. And what, what Sam does is provide input on a lot of different things, but he's the lead on all the education that happens. So all the educational things that happen, I'm here as a resource to help find a spot on the, on the facility, on the show site during a typical in-person show. And this year I was just kind of the platform to help uh, be able to put that online under the software that we had chosen to, to push forward through with, with Farm Science Review. So. Um, I'm, I'm going to turn it over to Sam in just a moment, and he can explain a little bit about what he does and, and his role with Farm Science Review. Welcome, Sam. Thanks, Nick, and thanks, Tom, for having all of us here today to uh, share our story about Farm Science Review and the education work we do there. Uh, it's hard to capture completely what we do from an education perspective at Farm Science Review because the depth and breadth of the education piece is, is very extreme. 
we do everything from the two topics that David and Elizabeth will share with you today, from farm management, ag crops, to um, natural resources at the Gwynn. Uh, we have a whole building that we cover small farm college, uh, small farms. We have a livestock unity and many other from an A&R perspective, but also at Farm Center View, our friends in 4-H, uh, family and consumer science and community development all have roles at the review to meet the needs of those people that, uh, that attend. So our work and my work is to guide the education steering committee that puts together our education programming. Uh, Elizabeth and David get really tired of me probably as we work through this process. And uh, just today we began talking about the 2021 review and when our first meetings will take place in a couple months to start preparation for that farm science review. It seems like we just worked through the review uh, just a few short days ago, uh, but it's time to plan for the future. And, and our goal is to provide educational opportunities for uh, those that participate in the review. So uh, we've got uh, probably 30 or 40 people that participate on the Education Steering Committee, and we work uh, once a month uh, typically through uh, the spring and summer to prepare for the review, uh, each sharing our ideas and what we're doing new and what our needs are uh, to do that education piece. This year was a little different. Uh, we talked about the coronavirus and where we were, and, and Nick, I think if I remember right, uh, it was about the first week of July, maybe the, the second one, when the decision was made we would need to go virtually and immediately people like Elizabeth and David stepped up and, and we did a complete pivot uh, to a, a virtual show, which was completely different than what we've done in the past, where we've been face-to-face -face and used our ex expertise in building relations and sharing our knowledge with those that are, are directly with us. And, and this year, uh, the team hit it out of the park as, as they converted to a virtual show, uh, which was, uh, I think, very well received in the ag community. Yeah, we'll, we'll go over to uh, David Marison next. And David leads uh, and helps lead, I should say, there's several people that kind of are involved in the Ask the Expert area. Uh, David's been involved with that for several years. And David, if you could just explain a little bit to the audience what Ask the Expert is at Farm Science Review, uh, how, how it usually operates and how it operated this year. How, how did it change a little bit? Sure, I should give credit to Jeff Workman and Chris Brunis. They're part of the three three headed monster that leads the Ask the Expert area. And usually on a typical year outside of 2020, we usually have 42 live um, Ask the Expert sessions where we get speakers and um, they could be faculty or staff members from OSU Extension or out of the Department of Agriculture, Environmental and Development Economics or out of the College of Vet Medicine. And what we attempt to do during these live 20 minute rolling sessions through the day is to address the hot topics, whether that be in farm management and our vet medicine, and have a Q&A panel, basically a Q&A pan panel where we handle, for instance, this year about COVID and, and how it is impacting agriculture. In a 20 minute session, we do a Q&A Q &A session and and just ask the experts, put the experts on the spot and people that are visiting the Farm Center View uh, can grab their lunch or they're strolling by our, our place where we, our stage that we have on site, they're able to stop and listen to those 20 minute presentations. Now, of course, Nick, as you mentioned, and as Sam mentioned as well, we had to, had to change completely this year, um, but we, we felt it went really well with the fact that we still had live sessions during the virtual Farm Science Review, still looking and having 42 experts talk about those hot topics. The only difference was you got to log in from the comfort of your home or your farm office and be able to sit and listen to our experts be quizzed by the moderators over the three-day period. So and we thought it went really well. And usually we have just over 1,100 folks that will stop by and participate in the Ask, ask the Expert sessions. Uh, this year on the virtual, virtual live we had just over 800 participants but the beauty of being virtual and being able to tape of course is that then you're able to have those sessions taped 
And then, of course, they've been filtering out across the state. People are able to listen at their convenience. Even today, they could go on and hear what the folks were talking about at the, the expert stage. And one thing I think is interesting, David, um, having veterinary medicine and, and even other departments in it within our college at CFAS, <laughs> viruses and discussion of transmission of disease has already been a topic before this year. Could you kind of just describe a little bit about what, you know, you mentioned the diversity, but can you go into a little more detail about what that diversity has been within, within the programming? Sure. Each year we, we look at the hot topics and of course we're trying to uh, forecast those as we're doing our planning moving in and then we try to be nimble to hit those hot topics. But we have for the last four or five years have been talking about the zoonotic diseases. Um, of course, we, it does not too long in our memory we were talking about swine flu or avian flu or disease X. It just happens that our experts have been talking about some of the incredible research that's being done at Ohio State on these um, disease transmissions, especially when we talk the human-animal interface. Um, but outside of those, you know, whether it's agricultural law, some of the hottest things on like a year ago in 2019, it was on hemp regulations and solar leases. And of course, we try to address some of the climate and weather factors that impact farmers. Of course, we had the, a few trade issues the past year, um, maybe with China, and those were highlighted on the stage the last couple of years. And traditionally, we always use the Farm Science Review as the as the unveiling of our crop budgets for the next year. Barry Ward does a great job of putting those together. And we always release those specifically at the Farm Science Review um, during the show. So we, you name it, we have had some really interesting topics. And this year, all of a sudden, everyone perked up and said, oh, you're talking about these diseases and their transmission. And, and we have, we've been talking about it for about five years now. So it's, um, it was great to have some of those discussions even continue this year. Yeah, and one other question I'll have for you, David, before we move on to Elizabeth. Um, so uh, in your normal programming throughout the year, you're doing a program called Farm, Bit, or Farm Office Live, excuse me. So Farm Office Live has been going on for, for several months now, um, and, and you've had some, some experience with virtual hosting, things like that. How do you think that affected uh, your uh, presence at Farm Science Review or vice versa? How did Farm Science Review help you with, with the setting up for Farm Office Live? Yeah, that's a great question. I think the Q&A format that we do at uh, Ask the Expert led into the Farm Office Live, which started in March. Of course, the Farm Office Live was live webinars that we were hosting throughout the pandemic, just trying to just help people negotiate the different challenges they were having with coronavirus, specifically with some of the federal assistance that was coming out. So just being able to do the Q&A panel at, at Farm Science Review in previous years really lent itself to the whole Q&A format as we moved into Farm Office Live. And then on the flip side, Farm Office Live and the ability to negotiate Zoom and be aware of all some of the issues with Zoom led it to to be a seamless transition for us to be able to offer the Ask the Expert via Zoom for the Farm Science Review. So I think well, they work together really nice, coupled together, those experiences. Yeah, very good. I would totally agree with that. And Elizabeth, um, we'll, we'll move on to you with a couple of questions. And uh, I want to point out that you have a pretty diverse role within the college and extension of what you do. So you have a few different appointments. And you also have a diverse way of participating at Farm Science Review. So could you just start out by kind of describing what it is you do at the college? And then two, what did you do at Farm Science Review and, and what is your main roles? Thanks, Nick. Um, I'm a field specialist in extension, which I've learned since I started here in 2016 means that I get to interact with a lot of different people across the college and sometimes be a bridge between departments on campus where I have a courtesy appointment with food, agriculture, and biological engineering as well as with our extension folks around the state. So I think it's a fantastic opportunity to help um, build connections and bring the science from campus out to our communities around the state and learn how it can impact farmers in positive ways. And so my role at Farm Science Review has really been an extension of that. I work with the agronomic crops team on the planning committee and um, big thanks to our leadership there, Jason Hart Chu, Amanda Doritas, and Mary Griffith. Um, the goal of that area at Farm Science Review every year is to highlight and showcase um, small field demonstrations that can help us communicate information about the larger scale research that we're conducting at Ohio State. 
So you can come out and see anything from equipment that allows you to subsurfacely apply manure, which is a trial that's been conducted around the state. This year we, we had planned on highlighting water quality and we did just in a different format. Um, in the past, we've had small scale seeding rate or nitrogen demonstrations. So it gives farmers the ability to come and see firsthand in real life what that research looks like and maybe get some ideas to try those things on their farm. Yeah, very good. And, and the, the plots is something I get excited about. Uh, in one of my former roles, I was a site manager at the Molly Care Ag Center and I was able to work one-on-one uh, -on -one with some of those educators putting the plots in. So when I go and I see those, I still, it gives me, you know, great pleasure to think that that's still going on and it's, it gets better every year still. You know, we thought we did a pretty good job several years ago and it keeps getting better and there's new ideas. So um, one thing with those plots, this year, and I'll give cr credit to Elizabeth because she really spearheaded this and led this virtual tour. Could you explain a little bit, Elizabeth? I know that virtual tours kind of are becoming more popular, but uh, in my opinion, you did a really good job, and um, it's been one of the most popular things through Farm Science Review Online. So could you please explain just a little bit more about that? Yeah, so when we started talking about making the switch to virtual, we wanted to retain as many of the benefits of getting to walk through the plots as we possibly could you know, somewhat selfishly because we had already put a lot of work into planting and, and working through the spring, maintaining and getting those going. And so we had been toying around recently with virtual reality technology, which allows you to get a 360 degree view of the environment that you want to look at. And so thanks to Sam and some other folks, we were able to make a purchase of a 360 degree camera. And we took that out and we shot pictures at various points across the plots and then used some really cool software that stitches them together. It works pretty similarly to Google Street View. So I think pretty intuitive for most people. So you could still walk through the plots virtually instead of in person. And then at points where we had things that were interesting going on, you could click on a video and have a one-sided conversation with our extension folks from around the state about what you're seeing and how you could incorporate that into your farm. And so it's still available online. And that's one of the nice things David mentioned about this virtual thing is now we have the ability to use these things more than just the three days that they would have been at the site. And, and one other thing um, that you've been involved with Elizabeth a little bit was um, we, we did try to, to dabble in the virtual field demonstrations uh, to a certain extent and, and just kind of use this year as a, uh, a year to test the water, so to speak, on what might be possible with mounting cameras in different places. Um, and it's kind of a fun thing to do when you're capturing a video. So if you could explain just a little bit about what that is and um, maybe maybe tell people, you, you can find it through Farm Science Review Online, but what, where else is it on the website or how can you navigate to find that? Yeah, absolutely. So the field demonstrations are probably one of a lot of the attendees' favorite things to go. You get to go kick the tires and see some of this machinery in action. And I know your crew worked really hard to put together the Harvest Live demo, which was one of my favorite things personally. But we wanted to still give farmers as close to an opportunity to see the equipment in action as possible. So we picked a few field activities that we could feature, one being tillage and then the other being harvest, corn harvest. And we took those same 360 cameras and put them all across the machines so that you could see views that you never had been able to see before um, in the field as that machinery was working. And the other cool thing is alongside those views, we also put some different sensors on the machinery to pull data as well. So not only is it cool to see on one, the ripper, your head down between the shanks where you probably would never go in your right mind to see in real life, but now you can really see how that tool is working. At the same time in these videos, you can see side by side the draft of that tractor pulling that implement and the resistance that it's experiencing. So hopefully there's some value there for farmers and it's something we're really excited about to see how we can incorporate that into future shows. I'm pretty excited about that and, and look forward to seeing how that can develop in the future and hopefully it's something that can stick and, and really provide value for, for producers looking to buy a new machine or figure out if this operation is right for them. Um, one big piece that I know that you focus on this time of year is putting together a big publication that's only a few years old uh, called eFields. It's becoming more of a program than it is just a book, you know, that we hand out to our constituents. Um, so if you could explain just for, you know, briefly, because Molly Care and Ag Center is one of the sites for a lot of, you know, some on-farm research within the eFields program. And we're pretty proud of that. You know, the site of Farm Science Review has some extra acres that we can do some large-scale research projects on, which eFields 
um, is a big part of that. So if you, if you could explain eFields and how does that tie into what we do at Molly Karen? Yeah, eFields is an on-farm research program that Ohio State has been um, starting to partner with farmers around the state to conduct research that is applicable to individual farms. And then we communicate that research across the state through our annual eFields report. And Molly Karen is one of our major partners. A lot of the research that you can see when you come to the review and you're driving by is published in that report. So you can see not only the cutting edge things that are happening at Molly Karen and the impacts that has on yield and economics, but then you can also see what happens when we apply those same practices to farms across Ohio. And that gives you the ability to understand when you see farms that are similar to yours, how those practices may perform on your own farm. And then we're always open to partnering with new farmers. So if you've ever got a question that you have on your farm that you would like to dig into and on-farm research sounds like the way to do that, you know, go ahead and reach out to us. We're always happy to partner. Yep. And one of the cool things I think is that it is available as a PDF online. So you can find that if you just Google or do an internet search for eFields OSU, you're going to find it. And um, even though we can't have these uh, as many in-person activities as we'd like in extension over the next several months, probably, um, you can still get access to that, even though you can't pick up the physical book at, say, a uh, uh, field day that you typically have gone to in the spring or uh, winter program that you usually is in person. So, you know, thanks, Elizabeth, for all that information, and it's great. And that'll lead right into Sam Custer, our uh, current leader in, in extension education, Ag and Natural Resources. So, Sam, um, I, I want to point out that you have double duty right now because you're still fulfilling your county educator duties. How does that tie into the, your, your uh, successful leadership right now with, with the Farm Science Review Committees and also leading all of Extension and Ag and Natural Resources? Well, Nick, I don't know how successful it's been, but uh, I truly being able to uh, have my grassroots approach, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to meet the needs of my uh, community members here in Dark County. And I think every day when I go to work and put on my uh, hat, out of ag administration. I'm thinking about how the work that I'm doing on a daily basis will affect uh, those across the state of Ohio to be able to do their jobs. So, you know, you think about, I've been in this position for eight years and been uh, maybe at times thought only if, if the people in Columbus would do this, I could be able to do my job better. So I think uh, having both roles I talk to myself, especially on those trips back and forth to Columbus. I put on one hat and then the other and have conversations. And hopefully after a two hour drive, we've worked something out so that we can, can make some improvements. But it, it truly um, has been nice to be able to uh, use some of my experiences uh, to be able to help uh, give some leadership and guidance at the state level. If I might follow up on that, Sam, uh you might uh, want to touch on really the level of success that was achieved with virtual farm science review in a broad sense in terms of the reach and as Elizabeth and David and Nick have already said, you know, the continuing availability, you know, sitting here, I'm thinking, hey, you missed some of that, Tom, you can still go see it, though, those 360 degree views that Elizabeth were describing and uh, having your eyeballs down there where the dirt is moving where you wouldn't normally be. That's pretty fascinating. But Again, Sam, uh, maybe the overall uh, um, impact of the program, you know, in terms of audience and so forth that we've experienced so far. Well, as, as Nick and David shared earlier and, and Elizabeth, uh, the program continues. Farm Science Review will continue uh, throughout uh, the next six to seven months uh, until we plan for the next. But, uh, you know, we, we, those numbers grow every day. Um, we're still trying to figure out how to track those numbers, maybe at the, the level um, that we would want to be able to measure that impact. Uh, what we knew um, by the middle of October, uh, Nick would probably correct me, I may be a little bit off on the numbers, but we may have had uh, impact or reach out to um, 700,000 um, uh, possibilities, hits, views, uh, attractions to that material. And, and I think typically for Farm Center Review, uh, we're probably uh, 140, 150,000. Nick would have a better number there. Um, people that experience Farm Center Review live, um, we know some of those people are three day attenders. 
Uh, we know some of them are one day attenders. Uh, we also know that some of our people that, that continue to hit uh, the farm center view, Nick's mom probably is, still hits the farm center view site every day just to uh, see Nick in action. But uh, we, we think that uh, although I think everybody on this screen today is uh, dreaming about an in-person farm center view in 2021, we know that we had impact and a really positive experience. Probably the takeaway would be, Tom, is that uh, for 2021, we know we'll probably have to include some virtual opportunities for our audience because they're gonna, they've are going they liked what we've done and we're gonna have to incorporate that somehow in our education piece in 21. Yeah, well, as everybody here knows very well and basically everybody that's ever been to Farm Science Review, even in three days, you can't see it all. You can't not experience everything that is there, even if you're faithful for all three days, all day long. And so your point about continuing a virtual aspect is certainly uh, beneficial. And uh, even Dave Marison talking about 42 different sessions over three days, you know, I'm pretty sure he'll confirm that nobody sits there straight <laughs> to hear every one of those, but, and maybe everybody doesn't have the interest, but obviously, there's more than you can absorb in that uh, time. So I know we're getting close, Nick, but uh, one uh, last uh, comment from you maybe about uh, really a big experience, especially for younger people come as uh, VOAG classes and all the yellow buses that show up is the really the central exhibit area. And I just wonder if you could comment a little bit about some of the ways in which you substituted that experience in the virtual sense with the many uh, exhibitors uh, from the very, very large equipment companies all the way down to the small short line and uh, service type people. Yeah, and, and I'll, I'll say that uh, not every company is able to pivot and change to virtual, um, like maybe some of the major manufacturers, are a little, it's a little easier for them because they're already producing online content and, and videos and all those different types of things and even have their own teams that do that within their company. So it's a lot easier for them to do that than, the, say, the smaller companies or even the mid-major companies. And um, the, some of the major companies even had their own virtual websites. So we were more of a, a pathway in order for people to realize, oh, this, this exists. And, and they had special uh, demonstrations. Some of them had special demonstrations during the three days of Farm Science Review that when a visitor came through Farm Science Review, they saw that maybe this company um, there, was, there was one company that had virtual experiences. Uh, they were in Ohio, but they weren't on our site. Um, and people were able to navigate to those through Farm Science Review Online and were able to discover them that way. So there's a lot of different ways it was used. And social media was a big aspect of that and some digital uh, focused marketing around those three days that a lot of companies did. So um, it's very different, of course, than, than being in person. And um, I, I haven't met one exhibitor yet or discussed with one exhibitor yet this year that thought that in-person was going away. They thought in-person is still better. So that's encouragement for us that we know that um, going through next year when we're looking forward to being in person, all of our exhibitors are as well. And I know that our visitors really want to be in person, but they do appreciate if they can't make it that there's something virtual for them to be able to still participate. So both, yep. both sides of the coin still. Absolutely, absolutely. I think we're just about to the point we need to uh, wrap this up. Indeed, it's going so quickly. I would just once again uh, stop to thank Sam Custer, the director, uh, assistant director for Ag and Natural Resources, Dave Marison, uh, educator in Ag Natural Resource uh, and specializing in farm management, Elizabeth Hawkins, uh, field specialist for OSU Extension, and Nick Zakrich, uh, the manager out at Farm Science Review. This chat has been uh, very rich and uh, once again appreciate the time you've invested with us today for now we'll be signing off and look for you next time we have a south centers chat